go. Aloha, YouTube. This is your boy, Crypto Roots. And today we got a special guest. Um, goes by the name of what? Squanchy Trades? Is that how you, how is that how you That's say That's me. Name? Squanchy That's Trades. exactly right. So uh, first of all, shout out your social media, your pages, and you know how people can follow you. Oh, yeah. I'm just, I'm pretty low profile, really. I got a Twitter. If y'all want to follow me, it's at Squanchy Trades. Yeah. So I found out about this uh this guy or this account uh and then you know guy on uh crypto twitter and i'm always looking for alpha like you know for people who don't know that's like people who are ahead of the pack who are looking for the crypto gems just the little the little money secrets in DeFi. uh we uh, we like to call that alpha so i noticed this account it's got like a meme account of like a drunk cat <laughs> but uh but the game was the information was pretty consistent and that's what i look for when I follow people, right, especially DeFi crypto, is that are they delivering consistent quality information? And you were shilling Rook. You're one of the few accounts. Well, I'm not say a few, but yeah, kind of the few accounts that were really consistently shilling Rook. So I said, okay, I need to pay attention to to what this account's saying. So that's kind of how I started following you. So um, would you mind sharing with us, you know, a little whatever you're willing to share about yourself personally? And how you got into yeah. cryptocurrency and DeFi? Hell yeah, man. Well, first of all, thank you, man. Those were some really nice words about my Twitter. Uh, that's what I'm about. I'm just here to, to help spread the word and spread the gospel of crypto. Now, how I got started in crypto is like a lot of people. Uh, price of Bitcoin went up and I was like a moth to a flame. You know what I mean? So back in 2017 2018 bubble yeah. that's what got me into crypto yeah i bought i was looking at my first ethereum purchase the other day first time i ever bought ethereum was at 1700 dollars. okay wow. but this was four years ago yeah yeah so uh, i was much younger back then i wasn't wise and of course i got wrecked when the bubble popped now uh my story though doesn't end there because i stayed in crypto yeah. uh, where most of my friends and then they left crypto yeah. I stayed, uh, and the reason I stayed is because it resonates with my personal beliefs and uh, that people should be self-sovereign over their money, that government shouldn't have any interference with the way we transact amongst ourselves. And, you know, the whole libertarian side of crypto, if you will, uh, resonated with me. So here I am here today. Uh, I DCA'd pretty well through the bear market, uh, and here I am now sitting uh, pretty, pretty blessed to be where I am right now. What's DCA? Uh, dollar cost average. Okay. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, just yeah. working a, a job, you know, yeah. nine to five and I just buy a little bit, you know, every time I got paid, I was buying Ethereum at 120 Bitcoin, well below $8,000 for a long time. Uh, cause you know, that was a long bear market. Yeah. And especially like if you try to tell your coworkers and other people are like, Nah, nah, that's what you're spending your money on. You're crazy, bro. No way. No way am I yep. spending my money on that. You're yeah, right. You know? Laughed out of rooms. Yeah. Laughed out of rooms. For real, mm -hmm. man. And those are the same people like, yo, so can you tell me a little <laughs> bit? Me up? Yeah, can you know, are you still into that? Like, you know, like all these people, like, and and we deserve it. I, 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 at the end of the day, people like me and you who got around in 2017 and stuck through the bear market, damn near almost three years, we really deserve mm -hmm. we really deserve um, some really good returns on our investments. You know, absolutely, man. It, it it's hard to be right or to stick with it. I was really questioning myself a lot and yeah. uh, whether I should be investing in crypto or not, or or what the future was, but. I'm just fortunate it resonated with my personal beliefs and I bought uh, cryptocurrencies out of a sense of principle. So yeah. um, there you go. And then, you know, next thing you know, DeFi summer came and oh, yeah, uh, that... made a lot of money, lost a lot of money, <laughs> did a lot of, uh, yeah. made a lot of I interesting moves. But by participating in, in that DeFi summer, it was a good warm up for what we're going through right now, I feel like. Yeah, that that DeFi summer really was like like a like a, it's almost like the gold rush of like 2017, but DeFi. You know, I was so excited, like whoa, like 
just like I couldn't even get sleep sometimes. I just had to keep checking the markets. Like, no way, you know? Oh man. You know? Hell yeah, I know that feeling, dude. Yeah, and and between compound finance and Wi-Fi and Unis, like these are the three major like game changers, right? That really like took it to the next level was the liquidity mining from Comp, was the yield farming from Wi-Fi, and was the Uniswap. You know, obviously there's a lot of other ones, but those really pushed it to the next level. Mm-hmm. So, I agree. So, what coins were you bullish on back in 2017 and 18? And do you still hold any of those same coins back then? You still are you still bullish on those coins? What coins and are you still bullish on them? Oh man, that's a dude. I love that question. That's a great question. So, uh, the only two co- well, I take this back, man. Back when I first came to the market, I was buying all sorts of crap. I was buying Tron, Cardano, all this, uh, but Ethereum. And- Shit coins, yes. Some of them, I didn't some know of if them, I yeah. could cuss on your yeah, stream. Yeah, man, this is, crypto, <laughs> this is crypto roots. We smoke weed on our fucking stream, man. All right. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right, so, um, yes, I bought a lot of shit coins in 2017. However, uh, during the bear market, um, I only bought Ethereum and Bitcoin. I didn't, I didn't really mess with too many other alts outside of those. And then it wasn't until DeFi summer that I kind of became, I got off my, maxi horse and and got back into uh some of those lower cap alts but there for a while i was just bitcoin and ethereum i thought those were going to be the only two that existed and it wasn't until i started experimenting in DeFi with a wallet called argent Mm -hmm. Um, that's kind of when i had my eureka moment and i kind of saw what these developers are capable of doing and uh i started you know earning providing liquidity on uniswap uh doing swaps on uniswap and then I had that light bulb moment and then that little dollar cost averaging I was doing, I, I started putting 80% of my paycheck into crypto uh, from that day forward. And yeah, I've had crazy returns, crazy uh, fortunate to uh, just be in the know early here what's going on with DeFi because it's, it's truly amazing what's happening and we're just replacing the legacy financial system. Um, but I, I could go on and on about that. but. To answer your question, yes, I still hold a lot of that Bitcoin and Ethereum I was buying in 2017 and through the bear market. Uh, I have not done a whole lot of selling yet. I still believe we're early. Now, a couple questions, and this is not to get too nosy. You can share with us. Do you plan on going full time on crypto? Oh, man, that is a goal of mine. Uh, If you follow my Twitter, you might see I put out a hashtag every now and then exit Wageland 2021. I love my job. I'm very fortunate to do what I do. I'm in insurance sales, uh, but you know, I, I'm more passionate about crypto, and I love to chase the dream. And so, what outside of you know gains investing? What other things that you would do for crypto sales? Like, uh, you have your own what trading group? Is that like a paid group or no. like? No, no, no. Okay, so I, I'm in insurance sales right now for my wage land job, my nine to five. Yeah. Um, I'm a I, I I'm a team lead at an outbound call center for a major insurance company. Yeah. Um, so. But in the mm-hmm. crypto world, what do you what do you have your own crypto related businesses or like you know anything? No, I don't. I okay. just trade, hold, and invest, and um, that's all I do with crypto. I don't I don't I have my own Discord, but it's just me and my friends, and you're in there now, Roots. Um, but that's a pretty exclusive group. But no, I have not found a way uh, to monetize my time in crypto. Bro, that's all I do with my life is monetize mm-hmm. my time. So we should at some point link up and I can show you how to hustle this crypto game. Like I make living off crypto full time. I live in Mexico and I've, I've been traveling mm-hmm. for the last two or three years. And my story, I used to be homeless in Hawaii. I used to be broke. I taught myself once I found about Bitcoin, I ended up teaching myself computer Mm -hmm. programming. And, you know, I ended up building my business from the ground up from my YouTube channel. And now, yeah, it's really especially with all this, it's everything's really paying off. I spent a lot of time down in the slumps, uh, you know, never, you know, people doubted me left and right, but I stuck with it and it's really paying off. So uh, with the knowledge you have, I'm very I'm I'm sure you can be offering crypto mentorships and uh, paid chat groups as well so i'll show you how to do that because that's what i how i make money too 
we back. So we getting the squanchy trades. He trade. Well, yo, first of all, can you explain the cat uh, avatar picture? <laughs> what, what, what what is that about? Yeah, so that's from a show called Rick and Morty. Straight up, uh, my favorite oh, character on the show. Mm -hmm. Okay, I. You know what? That cat did look that did look familiar, but I for, I, I I'll re have to rewatch the series to figure out what was his. Uh... Oh, you'll remember him next time. Now now that he's brought to your attention, he only, he's only in a couple episodes, but he's hilarious when he's there. And that's what I, you know what? And that's one of the things that kept me in the crypto community during the bear market, right? And it's the fucking memes. I'm telling you, <laughs> like, ain't nothing, like, it ain't nothing sums everything up. And this, like, how everything is a meme upon a meme. People's avatars, like, are memes. I'm a fucking meme. Elon Marley is a fucking meme. Like, mm -hmm. it's just like, that's where, and, and it's like, that's where you're going to get some of the most knowledgeable, knowledgeable information is from anonymous meme accounts on fucking CT on crypto Twitter. Like, damn right. Like you, like, it's, it's crazy how the world works. People thought I was crazy talking about crypto. Oh, you just smoke weed. You have dreadlocks. Yeah. Yeah. You're just trying mm -hmm. to, you're just trying to get by without doing anything, you know, like, and, and it's just like some people who you would like not think ha like you know be that knowledgeable or have it's it's the, that's what i love about the crypto community some of the people you are you you at least expect or never ever going to know about who are sharing the most valuable information you know oh man so true chain link god and um many others many other anons on uh crypto twitter who are the shit yeah and it just breaks the rules of that society normal traditional centralized mm -hmm. society has no you're supposed to go apply for a job no you're supposed to do this and that no you are just supposed to create a free account and just start giving out information <laughs> and people, yeah and then you be you, you're literally on the payroll with some of these uh decentralized finance projects you're like literally on the play for payroll like blue kirby was on the payroll for wi-fi mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so, so that's yeah that's what i try to teach in my channel just like no nah, bro the game's changed just go Go contribute, go add value to a community, mm -hmm. and you will be rewarded for doing so. Do it consistently. And I get yes. paid, I've gotten paid thousands from Index Co op just from my marketing. Marketing. Index. What? That's yeah, awesome, man. Bro, I'm telling you, I get paid from this crypto shit. You need to fuck with me, bro. Mm -hmm. I get paid mm -hmm. every fucking day from crypto outside of my mm -hmm. investments. So I'm mm -hmm. going to show you. I'm going to show you. I don't, I, here's another thing I don't buy assets and I don't sell assets yet. Yeah but I make more money than people who do buy and sell assets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not lying. I, I believe that because uh, I, I've done well trading, but it, hey, I'm still working my day job. So, well, I'm going to show you how to hustle this shit. I mean, you seem like you know enough. Mm -hmm. Like you seem, uh, you seem like you know enough. I'm going to show you mm -hmm. how to hustle this shit, bro. <laughs> well, you know, uh, what got me into your channel and your uh, Twitter page is you talk a lot about Solidity, the uh, the programming language and all that. That's definitely a goal of mine this year. I, I wanted to learn how to code, whether it's Solidity, Python, or the combination of both, or even some other languages. Uh, I feel I got to learn to code if I want to stay relevant here um, in this new era, in this new paradigm. Yeah, absolutely. There, there really is no debate about it, and it's not even necessarily writing the code any in, anymore. It's 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 understanding how the code works. Most of the code is already written for you, especially when it comes to smart contracts. A lot of these interfaces, a lot of these smart contracts, open Zeppelin libraries, they're all done for you, and it's best that you use them because you're you're putting your users at risk if you don't use this pre-written code. Mm -hmm. So it, a lot of the hard work and heavy lifting is done for you is just understanding how it all works. So I had to f teach myself, you know, straight up and I'm still working towards it, but uh, I, I can read smart contracts and I can, you know, show you how to, you know, at some point, but uh, yeah, that's going to give you the upper hand because now you can create your own keeper bots, right? Whether that's through on keeper network or keeper dial, like it just opens up so many doors and, um, and you'll just be much more knowledgeable about what you, you know, just it's yeah. worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. Give yourself about, be serious about it though consistently mm -hmm. uh you gotta start off with javascript so I'll, outside of the show mm -hmm. outside of the show i'll, I'll give you some tips that kind of help you on your journey oh man that would be amazing all right so what it, what exactly about rook do you why why are you rook's biggest shill 
You're not getting paid Because my bags nothing. are big. Because okay. my bags are big. Okay, no, so um, be, at least you're honest. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah, full disclosure here. I got big bags of Rook. And the reason I have big bags of Rook is because I'm confident in the team and I'm confident in what they're building. And I'm confident in their vision. And what they're trying to do or what they're doing, I shouldn't say trying, what's successfully being done is gasless transactions on layer one, right? So- Wait, wait, uh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Atomic bomb, boom, mm -hmm. blows in my mind. Are you, are you serious? Say that again. Are you, are, is, are, are you, say that again. Gasless transactions what? on layer on one. On layer one, yes. Mm -hmm. Rook, Rook does that and it does that using limit orders. So if you, anybody who's put in a limit order can use this platform. Um, all you do is simply go to the website, you put in a limit order and you wait for the keepers to fill it. Now, uh, there's some nuances to that, and it's not th – there is some give and take there to, to earn the gasless transaction, but I think it's totally worth it. And I think that this is a, like an L1 scaling solution, right? So I think a lot of L2 transactions, you don't have to roll them up or anything like that. We can do this here on level one, and I think this might – this kind of technology in the mempool – where we're battling for hundreds of millions of dollars in transactions a day and transaction settlement in that mempool. I think, I think Rook is onto something. I think they're a first mover. And the best thing about their platform is it generates revenue. So uh, that's what I look for when I invest in a crypto is it ge generating revenue, you know, platforms like SNX, Aave, um, KeeperDAO, Ren, they generate revenue um, and they have a treasury and it's all on chain. So you can track what they're doing. See, you know what you're talking about. You know what you're talking about. And are you involved in Rook's governance? No, I, you know, all I, the only thing I'm involved in with them is their Discord. And uh, I'm not even that involved. I just go look around uh, and things like that and maybe a comment here and there. But really, uh, I just, I believe in the product. So I'll go tweet about it, you know. Uh, that's all I really do, and I have a big investment in it. I've put in a few trades, uh, and I've participated in what they're calling the hiding game. Uh, but, yeah, I've earned rewards on the platform uh, for doing gasless transactions. So um, I could show you a lot about the game theory behind what people are doing now with Rook, and all they're doing is a bunch of transactions back and forth to earn the Rook rewards. Okay, I would like to. I would like to. Yeah, maybe maybe after this, we could we could do a private session, record that mm -hmm. too, and then uh, charge people for that one because that's where we're gonna be dropping hella alpha. Oh yeah, so yeah. That, so we are we gonna we're probably gonna do a root course. That's well, I'm, I'm giving up. We're probably gonna do a root course. You know, and, okay. And, and, and the mm -hmm. Squanchy trades is probably gonna lead it. He's gonna teach me. You guys are gonna learn. While, I, while I'm learning, he's teaching me. And then you, I'm saying, you know, you guys got to uh, buy that on Gumroad, right? And so we're going to work that out. See, I already tell you, I'm hustle, bro. I hustle. Yes, I like <laughs> I it. I like I it because, yeah, because this it's is valuable serious information. Alpha. It, it is. Yeah, it's, it's valuable information. And you should be compensated for taking the time to understand how that works, bro. That's the way yeah. I see it. Right. Yeah, I've because, done thousands of dollars in gas-free transactions. Because so. you're, you're saving people money. So at that point, mm -hmm. like, you know, it's better to buy. It's like some of these solar power energy. No, you. it's best that you buy it and spend the money now because you'll be saving money in the long run, right? So mm -hmm. you, you guys better buy the Rook course. We're going to be dropping hella game on the Rook course. So um, I, I really I really think that's a very creative way. And it, I feel the fundamentals only strengthen. Well, I wouldn't say only strengthen, but it only attracts more potential keepers and it only uh, coordinates them to work better even closer together, the higher the price, I mean, coordinate more uh, fairly together as higher the price of Rook goes up, if you know what I mean. So mm -hmm. if Rook goes up and up and up, you got people like, you know what? I think I should quit my job <laughs> like as a software engineer. <laughs> For real. I'm going to be, in, and then and it, not just that, it's like, now I'm a keeper. You know what? It's best that we all play. In fact, there'll be keeper cults, right? We're yep. going to stay together and play together because it benefits all of us. And if one of us gets out of line, you know what I'm saying? Da, 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 da. But you're going to see the, uh, I would say the loyalty and, and the enticeness of people like, yo, there's this thing I can do that's making way easier money and it's called Rook. 
right? So I just yes. feel like the higher the price goes, the, it's like the concrete uh, hardens. And you know what I'm saying? Like It, it, it does. Brings, yeah, everything together, you know, even tighter and closer. You know? What, one thing I want to add here about Rook is, it, it, yeah, it's it helps the keepers too. But what it helps also, and this is why I'm super bullish, is it helps the Ethereum network as a whole. That's, as we alleviate some of the congestion that's causing this high gas prices right now. That That is almost caught, what, like a multi-dimensional uh, purpose, right? Or something like, not only does, mm -hmm. because even, even Wi-Fi doesn't necessarily help the whole Ethereum ecosystem. In fact, in some ways it slows it down, even, you know, there's a lot of projects that like help its particular niche, but to help mm -hmm. the whole galaxy, you're, you got your own little ecosystem planet and you're actually helping the whole, I think that, that I, I may, I'm, yo, we're going to have to do a whole Rook podcast. Yes, <laughs> dude, th this is big. And, and uh, I, I tweet a lot about ETH 2.0 and when it's coming out and, all these things, I almost think that uh, depending on how this goes and how efficient the keepers become in, in managing the mempool, we might not even need ETH 2.0. Well, let's hope so. Yeah, right? yeah, because that fork is going to be rough um, well, if we fork. But, okay. but here, mm -hmm. here's my question to you. If, yeah, so there's a ETH 2.0 is a good thing, right? For what? The paying less fees, correct? And that's what Mm -hmm. That's what you're that's your value proposition to Rook, right? Less fees. Yes. But isn't ETH 2.0 supposed to speed up transactions? Wouldn't layer one still be on its layer one transaction speed, even if uh, Rook were to do well? Okay, so yes. Rook, okay, if we have ETH 2.0 or roll ups or however the future of the Ethereum ecosystem looks, there will still be a mempool and there will still be opportunity for keepers. Oh, I did not know that. Well, yeah, yes. it, what, even in proof of stake as a mempool, is that correct? Uh, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a stop right there because I'm not technical enough to yeah, answer I that. I don't know that without, either. But I, I, it may be. It's just that there's there's not many people in the waiting room anymore as for as long, right? There's a waiting yes. room, but they probably yes. not people waiting because there's a lot of doctors, right? you know yes but uh keepers they, they just communicate with well i guess they communicate with miners i'll have to look into that i don't know enough about e 2.0 uh to understand whether it has a mempool where keepers will be attacking it but regardless for now there's still hundreds of millions of dollars in transactions being settled in this mempool where keeper dow is operating well let's write that question down because that's research we can do to mm -hmm. to further bring value in rook course number two you know what i'm saying Right. Yes. <laughs> so yes. That, it, yes. So we write these questions down so we can hustle these questions. You know what I'm saying? These answers later. That's, mm -hmm. the, that's the game right there. Uh, that is. Uh, so does uh, does uh, ETH 2.0 POS um, have a mempool? Have a mempool? Yes. And, and will keepers still have arbitrage opportunities okay. in that mempool? Because the keepers, they generate money in different ways with yeah. flash loans and arbitrage. Um, yeah. So uh i know for there's still going to be flash loans on ETH on e 2.0 i think um so there's still going to be opportunity there i just don't know how that mempool is going to look like you said when they're in the waiting room uh, i don't know how that's going to look hmm. well as this technology adopts to more and more and more and more people right i, I would mm -hmm. assume you know there'd be much 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 more transactions so we could see a, a actual mempool right as long yeah. as adoption is going at a very steady rate and especially if the price of E2.0 goes up. So you, mm -hmm. so yeah, more and more people are going to start using the Ethereum network, even on mm -hmm. ETH 2.0. And that's, well, so, you know, ETH 2.0 comes in phases, right? Phase zero, mm -hmm. phase one, phase 1. what five, And then if we need to, two, it's not, we don't all have to go to ETH2. ETH we can end at 1.5 if we need to. Two is the last extra step to, mm. to yeah yeah so we can end at one point phase 1.5 and uh so it's really interesting like it's right around the corner I, I mean we're only what a couple years out from seeing you know very fast i mean i'm telling you we're gonna be smooth sailing once transactions yeah. are like you know what i'm saying cheap mm -hmm. fast easy i mean a whole a really a whole nother industry will open up within man i can't wait oh you know what i'm saying within mm -hmm. an, so 
can I ask you about some other projects or you only want to be a, a, rook, a rook maxi? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not a rook maxi. Uh, I will tweet about that, though, and joke about it. But no, I'm definitely not a rook maxi. I love many other cryptos. All right. So what are your thoughts about? Uh, oh, let's talk about Ren. Oh, yes. So, so there's a lot of there's a lot of value proposition. What explain to me what are some of the key value propositions? Because it, anybody can create a, a system to bring Bitcoin in, onto DeFi. What makes Ren different or unique or so valuable? Well, it, it does it. Well, there's a couple of different things that are unique and valuable about it. One, it's permissionless and there's no KYC, right? So if you Love go it. to wrap Bitcoin, yeah. you're going to have to do a little bit of KYC. Where Ren, it's permissionless, uh, decentralized, well, as decentralized as it can get for now. They have plans to further decentralize it because decentralization is a spectrum. Okay, so we do uh, have but, to talk about that. So I hate to interrupt mm -hmm. you. Uh, mm -hmm. What about Ren currently is not as decentralized as it could be? And, or, or will is like, what, what are some of those potential risk uh, that, that we're taking on? And I, I've only heard a few rumors, but would you? Would you yeah, mind? so I, I would say the biggest risk is that. Uh, the developers have the private keys to all the Bitcoin in the Ren VM. Yeah. Right. So there is flight risk, right? Is it, they is it, is it a small multi sig? Uh, I believe it is a multi sig, yes. But I think they want to add more multi signatures to it or find a way to where no one has ownership of the keys. Something like that. They, okay. they have a Medium article on the road to decentralization. We'll have to link that uh, because that goes in more detail about it but they do have a plan to further decentralize the network to where nobody has the private keys to the honeypot of the bitcoin so uh i don't know exactly how that will work but i am a dark node operator i do have a dark node awesome um mm -hmm. and you. i've go ahead no I'm, I'm i'm glad to talk to someone who runs a dark node bro oh yeah and it, the experience has been great i'm not very technical at all um and i was able to set up my node like that uh very easy to do so i really uh and the rewards are fantastic paid in bitcoin um yeah. uh every 28 days you know yeah. so that's my first uh revenue stream in crypto that dope. that i've made a passive income so so mm -hmm. that's good to hear man yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah. yeah my plan my plan here i'll just go ahead and just whoa, whoa i might want to save this this is alpha uh, yeah, I'll yeah, save, save that. Save the alpha. Save I'll the save alpha. that. I'll save the alpha. Yeah. But yeah, I almost leaked that. Write, but write that down mm -hmm. though, so you remember it later. You know. Got it right what, here. Yeah. So you know what you're gonna say. All right, here we go. I got a note here. Uh, but. <clears throat> I, I really like Ren because, you know, for the obvious reasons, people are going to want to bring Bitcoin onto Ethereum so they can yield farm with it, right? Um, and do many other things with Ren BTC. Uh, but that's why I like it. I think there's going to be high demand for Bitcoin on Ethereum. And I think there's going to be high demand for people to farm uh, with their Bitcoin as they'll just get better interest rates in DeFi than they could get in the traditional world. Yeah, yeah. After a certain, yeah. What I, I what I like about Ren, for the most part, is that that uh, anonymous the anonymous yes. the anonymous bridge, the permissionless anonymous yep. bridge that you can go back and forth on. And now, like I used to use like Coin Switch to like mm -hmm. uh, you know the coin there's like Coin Switch the website, and it's just gotten so difficult that now I'm just saying, hey, let me just get. Uh, let me buy some Rim BTC, send it to Bitcoin, and then send it to a friend. Or right, because some of my people they only mm -hmm. know Bitcoin. They, it, Ethereum's mm -hmm. just too much. So, I it's all it's like right now. I'm just telling everybody, you know, just wrap it through Rin, wrap it through Rin, wrap it through Rin. Mm -hmm. So it's like a, almost a common recommendation that I get for like, you know, just just throw it on, throw it on Rim BTC, lend out the Rim BTC, and so I I think I th uh, I'm just so bullish on Rin as well. I need a bigger mm -hmm. bag. Um, mm -hmm. I definitely want to be a dark node operator someday. I think it'll be worth it. And I just think, but the, the whole thing, the whole biggest eh, the, is, is those ownership of those private keys though, man. That, that's what sets, oh. the, that's what sets the score back. You know, it's like, it does, ah. it does, so, you know, and it, 
that's a risk I'm I'm open to, right? Uh, and I'm well aware of that, and I understand it. And I long wing, and I put my trust in him, and I trust him, and I trust his influence on the space. A lot of people talk about Andre Cronier. I think Long Wang is 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 up there with him, but gets zero recognition. And I think it's just because he works quieter, man. He does things in silence. He makes moves much quieter than Andre does. Yeah, I, and some of these influencers, they're not really were meant for the spotlight, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, like some people, it was just thrown upon them, like just because. Like, yeah, you know, Andre was, is a yeah. perfect example of that, yeah, man. It's just like, wait, what the fuck? Now I gotta be this like, <laughs> a, like a list celebrity, and, and it's only <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And and to 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 wrap it up, are you bullish on NFTs? And if so, which NFTs oh. are you bullish on? Oh man, I'm so bullish on NFTs. Now, as far as which NFTs I'm bullish on, you know, anything that's not already popular, I don't know how to value, right? This isn't a market that I'm going to try to trade. I have a few collectibles from people on Twitter that I like that were given to me uh, just from, you know, building relationship and meeting people on crypto Twitter. I can show you my NFT library, uh, but I have a few uh, playlists that are in an NFT form. I also have a few pieces of digital art that are in NFT form. And if anybody here knows who Pepe Caso is, uh, he is awesome. I shout out to him on Twitter. It's at Pepe Caso. He does Pepe's, the little green frogs, um, for crypto influencers. Like he's done them for Bagsy and Crypto Gains and, you know, all the all the big, yeah. big, big crypto Twitter guys. So he works directly with them and he gave me a free NFT and I'm holding on to that. Hopefully... Uh, Pepe Caso gets really big and community grows and uh, hopefully that NFT will go up in value but uh, I'm very bullish on it and the reason I'm bullish on it is because NFTs benefit not only the person who purchased it but the creator it cuts out that that extra label brand they need or that uh, all the copyrights it just gets rid of all that and gives the power to the creator and I think that's a powerful, beautiful thing, and I and that's why I'm bullish on NFTs because it empowers the creators of all the art. I love it. I love it. I, I I'm not heavy in the NFTs, but I'm heavy into Crypto Kitties. I don't know why. <laughs> I just am. I have like 40 kittens, you know. <laughs> and I'm just hey. Like, I mean, aren't they kind of the same is, thing? Is it like, Crypto yeah, Kitty the first form of an NFT? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's why I like. It. I just see the value mm-hmm. proposition because kids and like moms and like they're just like they could be so relatable. Like that's one of the best ways to teach people that who are just like, nah, I'm not into math. Nah, I'm not into computers. But you can make money off buying and selling and breeding digital kittens. Okay, I'm into that. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so it's like, what, what? Okay, what? I need Ethereum. Okay, cool. I need a mini mask. Okay, cool. Where's my cat? Like I've seen uh, some people just like straight, where is my cat? I want my cat. Like, and they yep. just set up a made mask, they wrote down the private keys, they got some ETH, and they didn't care o- about the significance of doing that. They just glad that they had a, a cat that nobody else had. You know, oh, dude, I w- I don't <laughs> hey, confession. I don't have a crypto kitty, dude. I'll I need send to you get one. one. I'll send you I one. I need man. one. I'll send I you need one. one. You know, man, that's one. awesome. Word. So um squanchy trades. It was good chatting with you. We definitely we want to have you back on the Crypto Roots channel. We definitely going to drop a root course and maybe even a root podcast. Are you? Would you like to come back on the channel, dude? Fuck yeah, I'll be back, man. <laughs> We're gonna be leaking that alpha and guys. Once we teach you how to use Rook or Keeper DAO, you're gonna be doing gasless transactions on Ethereum. I'm excited. I know I already I should have been on top of that, but I'm glad I got a teacher here to teach me. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Each one teach one. The revolution not, would not be televised. You got to spread this crypto knowledge by reaching out to people and exchanging information. Hey, All man. right. <sighs> it was nice chatting with you, bro. Yes, sir. Roots. It was awesome, man. You have a good one. Holler at me. All right. Take care. See Aloha. ya.